Now, the fact is women will never give mutual respect to the men who actually care for them. And what that means is the biggest lie sold to men is that women have the ability to reciprocate interests or women have the ability to reciprocate care if given to them. This is why mutual respect in a relationship or in an interaction with women is not only the fastest way to lose her genuine desire that she once had for you, but this is also the fastest way to completely crush all of the chemistry that leaves you wondering what actually happened. If you stick with me until the end of this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to have the leverage and the upper hand so that way these instances don't happen to you time and time again. Now, after this video is done, what I want you to do is I want you to go down below, you check out the link in the description so I can show you MBT, masculine behavioral techniques, because what I did is I put together a full length behind the scenes presentation step by step for you so that way you can copy this into your life and get even quicker results at a much faster pace. Let's dive in. Now today I'm showing you step by step why women never give mutual respect to men who care about them in relationships. And if you give this sort of mutual respect where you're expecting reciprocation, you're expecting her interest to be maintained, you're going to be in for pain. So for the first time ever, we're starting on this side of the marker board today because this is going to make total sense if we go through this in sequential order. So. What you have to know going into this video, okay, I'm going to be breaking this down on a deep, deep level so you can understand how a woman's brain actually operates when it comes to things like love, chemistry, genuine desire, or sex. Mutual respect in a relationship. I love you, you love me, let's get together and have a big family, okay? Mutual care, mutual interest. This doesn't exist and here's why. Mutual respect leads to you failing interest tests. When I say interest tests, this is extremely important for you to understand and to comprehend because the whole element, okay, of majority of the videos you're probably watching when men label them as shit tests, okay, what is what the typical narrative around tests is that a woman tests your strength. But if you look at this at a deeper level, your strength is actually your interest level. A woman, when she is testing you, she is testing your interest level. So this is extremely important to know because the higher interest you start to show, the higher interest you engage with, the higher her tests become, the, the, the worse her behavior becomes because now that mutual respect, that mutual care, that mutual chemistry is actually causing her to lose interest. So here's what you have to know at a surface level, the better you treat a woman, the ruder they become. Okay, some guys can call this rude, some guys call this bitchy behavior, some, guy, some guys call this she's always nagging. If it's a fresh relationship, some guys are gonna say she's pulling away quickly. What, the, the fact is women don't ever actually play games. The truth is that women will oftentimes just give you interest tests and the more that you fail them, she's actually doing a pullback. That is all it is. There is no mixed signals, there is no games to be played. She either has attraction for you or she doesn't. And it's very clear to see that if you stop trying to read between the lines and you just look at her behavior. So the better you treat a woman, the ruder they become. Now, she feels that you treat her this way because you have to. See, the second that a woman feels like you have to treat her this way in order to keep her, this is the second that she starts to test you even harder. She starts to give you worse behavior. Her mood and energy shifts and you're sitting there wondering what went wrong. So read this with me. She feels that you treat her well. She feels that you give her mutual respect. She feels that you give her lots of care because you have to. Meaning your SMV, your sexual market value is lower than hers. This starts, that what this does is this programs in her head to doubt your value. Okay, this is, this is how all women work on the deepest level. She starts to doubt your SMV. She doubts your sexual market value. So what, what's really happening in a woman's brain when she starts to doubt your sexual market value is she wonders if you can pull another girl as hot as she is. She's sitting there wondering, can this guy pull a woman who's as sexy as me, as beautiful as me? Okay, can this guy pull another, a, a woman who's at my level of attractiveness when it comes to beauty and femininity? This is what she's asking herself. So keep in mind, she's not doubting that you can get another girl. Okay, women oftentimes know that if you're with a woman in the first place, there's a chance that she saw value in you. There's a chance that other women will see value in you. She knows that. She's not wondering if you can just get another girl. What she's really wondering is she's wondering if, she, if you can get another woman as hot as her. So what this boils down to is women test your interest to gauge if she is out of your league. Read this with me one more time because if this stings, it's supposed to. Women test your interest to gauge if she is out of your league. 
women, what, what, what happens is women have psychological leagues that they place men in. And based off how you pass her interest tests is going to dictate which league she categorizes you in. Which means even if you started, okay, as an eight, nine, or 10 interest, excuse me, even if you started as an eight, nine, or 10, as far as attractiveness in her brain, the more interest tests and interest indicators that you fail, the quicker you lower her attraction. You might be wondering what this has to do with mutual respect or mutual care in a relationship. Don't worry yet, we're going to get to that in a second, okay? Women test your interest to gauge if she's out of your league. So, looking at this, okay, the only reason a woman leaves, the only, this is the only reason that a woman leaves. You can write this down in a notebook, a journal, you can save this video, you can do whatever you want with it, but just hear me out. The only reason a woman leaves is because she feels she can do better. She feels that she can do better. A higher value, more attractive, more masculine man to lead her and her emotions. So, read this with me. Oftentimes she can't. Okay, this is what you have to know. These are like, these are pre-programmed psychological and subconscious responses that she's giving. She's not dictating her own attraction, okay? Her attraction and what she's attracted to is hardwired into her. So just because she feels that she can do better, oftentimes she can't. Uh, this is what you have to know is oftentimes a woman's intuition can even guide them wrong in certain circumstances and get them to make very short-sighted decisions that they feel like they made a big mistake in the future. So what you have to understand is oftentimes she can't, but she's fighting her own hypergamy. Okay, if she's trying to override her subconscious decisions with potential logic to decide if she wants to stay with this man or not. And oftentimes she can't control that hypergamous instinct, it just happens. So she's fighting her own hypergamy, which means it's really not her fault. If a woman's ever pulled away from you, if, like if any of this shit has ever happened to you, you can't really blame them, it's just how they're programmed. And the issue oftentimes isn't even in your masculinity, the issue oftentimes isn't even in your own attractiveness, the issue is just you believe the wrong things about love because of the pre-programmed narratives that men have been sold over the past 50 years when it comes to music, media, Valentine's Day, love letters, all this shit that men have seen, okay, you start to get a false identity of what love actually is to a woman. So it's really not your fault. Most guys have more swag, more confidence. Like what I really want guys to know on this channel is you're probably more attractive than you give yourself credit for. You just have to start to act like it. As soon as you can step into that whole assumed authority, where you can assume authority over your own life, you assume that you are just an attractive man, you carry yourself as such, you would be amazed at the level of women that you can attract. Like I'll tell you this, the women that I've had over the past three years, far different and a far higher like level or caliber of woman than I was able to get when I was 19, 20, 21. The, the more you step into your own confidence, the better results you're gonna have. So let me really like give you a picture of this in a woman's brain. We have guy one versus guy two, okay? Guy one makes $20 million a month Guy one also has a mansion. Guy one is six foot six, and on top of that, um, let's say he's 250 pounds with six pack abs, and when he walks down the mall, every single woman looks at him. Okay, cool, he's an attractive guy, okay? But guy number, one, guy number one falls head over heels in love and builds a strong emotional attachment to a specific woman that he's monogamously committed to. So what happens is guy number one fails interest test after interest test after interest test because he treats her like a queen. Therefore, she starts, she starts to now doubt his sexual market value and if this guy can actually replace her if he had to. She starts to doubt his value. So he ends up getting left. Then let's use guy number two for example. Guy number two is fresh out of jail, only has $10 to his name, okay, is only five foot 11, but carries himself like he's the shit, carries himself like he's above everyone, and gives that woman no certainty if he even likes her or not. She, she's not necessarily knowing exactly where she stands with him. Okay, guy number two will hook that woman's heart far quicker than guy number one, even though guy number one on paper is a much better fit. This is hypergamy. Okay, hypergamy is a feeling. So those of you who, like anytime I, I know a guy is completely screwed in a relationship, he says words like mutual respect or mutual care or my favorite, reciprocation. She just doesn't reciprocate interests like I'm wanting. If you have ever said those things to yourself, the whole issue is that you started the frame of the relationship entering a false pre-programmed idea of what love actually is. So now as we shift over to this side of the whiteboard, here's what you have to know. Without tension in a relationship, plus urgency to see you and urgency to please you. And when I say urgency, meaning she has to see you now. 
She has to go fix this right now. She has urgency to set that date so that way other women don't get to you before she does. Read this. Without tension plus urgency, chemistry cannot occur. Without tension in a relationship plus urgency, it is impossible to create continuous chemistry in a relationship. Another false pre-programmed idea that most men have been sold is that chemistry equals love and chemistry is stable com commitment and compatibility. This is false. Chemistry is only created through tension and her not necessarily knowing where this is fully going to go. So men in LTRs, men in long-term relationships become predictable. Okay. Predictability causes loss of tension. Loss of tension causes zero sexual desire, zero sexual desire, cause of loss of respect and end of the long-term relationship. So 24 seven, okay. She needs to have this in her mind. Okay. 24 seven in her mind. She needs to be like in the mindset of keeping things together to please you. Read that with me, keeping things together to please you. She wants to naturally be the one who keeps the relationship together because now she has something to nurture. Now she has something to take care of. Now she has something to fix. Women are natural fixers when it comes to the internal or the emotional problems that she wants to solve naturally in a relationship. This is why women want to be nurturing. The key though, is they only want to be nurturing to specific men who know how to act like they are above them. Okay, if you're unable to do this, you are not necessarily satisfying hypergamy, which we'll get to in a second. Women, okay, a woman's nature to try to hold a relationship together is the one thing that she enjoys most. So if you're not able to do this, okay, if you're expecting this mutual respect or mutual care as a logical decision that you're wanting her to make, you're going to be left empty handed every single time. And here's why. She needs something to fix and she needs something to hold together, AKA tension. That means urgency equals I need to do this or I need to fix this right now. Okay. Urgency. Now, what have I told you guys in past videos when it comes to urgency in a relationship to fix situations? If you're urgently trying to fix things, you have already lost because you've entered into your feminine energy. The second that a man becomes urgent, like I have to text her now. I have to call her now. I have to save this right now. I have to fix this shit right now. You must understand that you have completely revealed at the deepest level what your sexual market value is. You have completely revealed a scarcity mindset. You have completely revealed that you're in fear of loss of losing this woman. And you have completely revealed that she is higher level, higher, higher caliber than you. You have revealed that she is above you. This is a very big mistake. Now, here's why urgency there, there, now keep this in mind. Urgency needs to be stimulated on a woman's end. But here's what you have to know about urgency. Her urgency comes from comes through emotion. So when a woman wants to fix something, that means she's emotionally invested in the situation. This is when she'll call you 10, 15 times in a row to try to come over to your house to fix the issue. Okay. This is when she's in a scarcity mindset to lose you. However, here's the key determining factor that you have to understand about a woman's urgency versus a man's and why when a man displays urgency, it's a complete attraction killer. A woman's urgency only comes when she's already emotionally invested in the man. If you have a woman who's urgently trying to fix things with you, that means she is in love. Her urgency is stemmed out of emotion. Okay. A man's urgency is often comes from his sex drive. A man's urgency to fix something or solve something comes because we have 10 times the sex drive or 10 times the testosterone of the average woman. Now here's what women know how to do. Most women definitely know how to use a use and leverage a man's sex drive against him to get him in a false scarcity mindset. This is why I'm telling you guys, if you can extend the time horizon of love, if you can extend the time horizon of I fall in love or like I like a woman or I want a woman after just one or two weeks until you stretch it to her timeline and you say, Hey, I understand that a woman takes time to build feelings. I understand that a woman takes time to build that tension. I understand that a woman takes three, four, five months to truly feel safe with a man to emotionally invest, to love him. You can now, you can now actually tame down that urgency when you're with a woman. Okay. You can be in that chill, relaxed or seductive state. So without tension plus urgency, chemistry can't occur. This is what you have to know. Now, men who subscribe to the words mutual respect or reciprocation, Okay. Mutual respect. If guys are saying these things, truthfully, a woman probably categorizes you as beta or weak in the eyes of herself, which means you failed one too many interest tests, which means when she sees you, it shows that you don't naturally get the game. 
When I say you don't naturally get the game, what she's seeing is that you're a guy who's not competent enough to see through the lens of the false programming that you've been given. If she sees that you naturally just don't get it, like you naturally just don't know the right moves to lay or to play, you naturally are not living your own life of abundance or your own life of purpose or your own life where you're dating around too and actually exercising your own options, she sees that you're a guy who gets fixated on a specific chick. If that's you, she's gonna sense that you don't have any options to begin with, and that's the quickest way to crush desire. So when she sees that you don't get the game, here's what happens. Naturally, a woman wants to serve or to please a man that she loves and she admires, but she no longer can give this to you because you're operating out of logic. You're saying if I give mutual respect and desire, she's gonna give mutual respect and desire. And that's just not how a woman's brain works. That's not how they operate. Now, there's a lot of men out there who get very bitter and they say, well, you know what? Why do we have to play by their rules or why is it that they're in control of these things? Why is it that they're not chasing and pursuing us? Here's the real reason. The reason is because they don't have to. Men don't lose attraction in the ways that women do. Therefore, if you want to consistently see a woman, see this is why oftentimes commitment will crush and kill desire because it's a woman's job to pursue commitment in all ways, shapes and forms. If you're not getting questions like, where is this going or where do you see yourself with me? She is not in the, in the, in the mindset or in the place to be pursuing you back at the way that she wants to. So here's why you just don't get it. You're operating out of your male driven logistical brain. When I say your male li driven logistical brain, you have to understand that she sees the world in a completely different lens than the way that you do. Meaning the way, like your logistical male brain, the way you actually see the world, the way that you perceive love, the way that you perceive attraction is polar opposite. And when I say polar opposite, it is completely polar opposite to hers. This is why I started off the video saying that the better you treat a woman, the ruder they become, the worse her behavior becomes. This is polar opposite to a man, right? If you have, a, if you have a, a guy best friend or a dude best friend, right? And he's nice to you, he buys you a beer every Saturday, you naturally want to treat him well as well. That is not how women operate. You are operating out of logic, she's operating out of emotion. You have to accept this. So when you're operating out of your male driven logistical brain, your intuition will never lead you correct. Your intuition will lead you wrong 100% of the time. So this is the whole problem with the narratives that men believe when it comes to things like follow your heart, do what's right, right? What does your gut tell you? I'm going to tell you this. If you trust your gut, if you trust your intuition, if you trust your male logistical brain of what makes sense, you are going to be screwed and lose out every time. Whatever your intuition or gut tells you to do with a woman, with, with a woman, excuse me, do the fucking opposite. This is dead serious because she is viewing the, 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 the lens that she views the world is polar opposite than you. So do the fucking opposite. Your intuition will lead you wrong 100% of the time and here's why. You assume, well, I respect her 100%, so she's gonna respect me 100%. I love and I care for her, therefore she'll love and care for me. That is a male logistical brain pattern. That is not how they work. Once again, I'm gonna reiterate, you might be wondering and you say, well, why do we have to play by their rules? Why don't they play by ours? Because these are the reasons why they exit. If eventually enough men could turn the tables where all of a sudden they would have to, you know, work to keep a man, okay? They would have high interests just like you do. However, this is not the world that we live in. So you have to adapt, right? This is uh, in some way it's survival of the fittest. You have to adapt and you have to have the competency to see this through because 99% of guys right now are not able to do this. So what I can tell you is if you can internalize these full on, you know, 20, 30 minute presentations that I put together for you, you got to understand you have a, a leg up. You have a massive advantage over 99% of guys right now in the world. So these things that you believe are leading you wrong. Then here's the fact, the worst word that a man can give in the dating dictionary is the word equal. Meaning I treat her this way, so equally she will treat me this way. Or reciprocation or mutual desire, okay? What guys say is they say, if I treat her like XYZ, she'll treat me like XYZ. And this, once again, I'm going to tell you is not how a woman's brain works. So now, as soon as you start to treat her with this mutual love, mutual respect, mutual desire, not only do you start to fail her interest tests, but as you fail her interest tests that we discussed over here, what happens is now hypergamy isn't satisfied. When I say hypergamy isn't satisfied, a woman wants to date or marry up. 
Okay, a woman, her sexual selectivity, she wants a man who's better than her. And when I say better than her, she wants to look at you like you're the prize, Okay, and she wants to be able to look at you like you're actually out of her league. She wants to look at you like she had to win you over. If you can't instill this, install this into her brain, hypergamy will never be satisfied because hypergamy is a feeling. This is why I gave you the example of guy one versus guy two. Guy one is obviously on paper much harder to replace. He makes $20 million a year, he's six foot six, he has six pack abs, right? He is well known and he's famous, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. The reason why it doesn't matter is because hypergamy is a feeling. So when guy two comes along and he maybe treats her, he doesn't treat her well, but he doesn't give a fuck. That's going to signal to her a stronger, higher level, higher value mate than guy number one, because she's going to sit there and go, if guy number one had the options of guy number two, guy number one wouldn't have to treat me good like this. Guy number one wouldn't have to treat me this way because he wouldn't have to. You see, this is a feeling. So men have been sold a false lie of what value is to a woman. Value is the psychological and subconscious frames and nuances that you can put around yourself to get her to respect you. See, this is the other thing too. I, you, if you're watching this channel, you are not after a woman's sex. The, the, qui like, the, fast, like, the faster you can get detached out of the mindset that you're after her sex, you got to understand this. Women already know that all that um, if the, she's an attractive girl, she knows that men want to sleep with her. So you're not after that. You're after her respect. You're after her loyalty. You're after her admiration for you. You want her to adore you. Those are the things that a man desires out of a woman. Fuck the sex. If you can scrap your brain and you say, fuck the sex, I want her respect. I want her to adore me. I want her to admire me. You become a powerful man because no longer does your lust hold weight over you. See, this is what the thing why I told you. You're, a man's sex drive has oftentimes been weaponized against them. So you're going to notice if you send a text message to a girl, Okay, and you notice that she opens it. Okay, you're waiting for that reply and you're like, damn, I wonder when she's gonna reply. A woman, on the other hand, <laughs> their brain's polar opposite. Let's say you send a woman a text message, a woman has no problem waiting 12 hours to reply. Reason being is because she's not in a state of urgency. She doesn't have the sex drive that you have. She doesn't have the 10 times the testosterone pumping through her wondering, man, man, I wonder if I can get a woman today. I wonder if I can actually go on a date today. Women don't operate that way. The lens at which they see the world is not as sexually driven as a guy's. When a woman can go through a walk, go for a walk in the park, look at all the leaves outside on the trees with her girlfriends and not think about sex. A woman can go to the aquarium or the swimming pool and just enjoy her life without thinking about men. It's very hard for men to do this because women know that men think about women 24 seven. So you got to understand this. If you, it, it, this isn't going to change. You just have to get better at playing the game and knowing how to adapt. So when this happens, a woman's hypergamy isn't satisfied as her hypergamy isn't satisfied because you have failed your interest test and your interest indicators. You start to realize that, Hey, she can no longer look up to me. A woman needs to look up to a man because mutual respect equals you're failing all of her interest tests. Now this is the whole game. This is where we're going to leave off today because this is the most important thing. You might be sitting here wondering, Casey, this sounds really complex and really confusing and it really isn't. And it isn't because this is the whole game in a nutshell. This is the game from the first text message or the first DM that you send a girl. This is the interaction or the whole game from the first cold approach that you do all the way until you're dating, all the way until maybe you're married for 30 years. These are like, this is the game right here in a nutshell. I'm going to lay it down for you. Stage one is what I call pre-sex. This is before you guys have slept together. The only thing that you have to worry about, okay, this is the game. It's shit tests. And then after you guys have slept together and you've been intimate, it is booty whipping tests to see if you're weak for her yet. That's it. This is the whole game in a nutshell. So pre-sex stage one, this is where you're going to get shit tested. This is where you're going to get the things on the first date, like, or you're trying to set up your first date, things like I'm busy. Can we maybe do this tomorrow? This is where you're going to get maybe little answers like possibly. And then depending on how you reply is going to dictate if she sets up that date with you for the following Saturday. Notice you cannot let your urgency get the best of you with women in the beginning. You need to wait a week. Okay. Wait two weeks, stretch out the time horizon for when that first date occurs, let that tension and let that anticipation build for what you might be like in her brain. 
Okay, you exercise and you arouse that mystery or you exercise and you arouse that desire dynamic where she starts to wonder about you. This is how you actually hook a woman's heart. So in the beginning, you get shit tested. Things like, I'm busy, can we maybe do this tomorrow? Or seriously, these are the shoes that you picked? Right, she tries to start to troll you a little bit. She starts to get under your skin. Or things like, you know, uh, you think you're funny, don't you? Right, if you say something and what she's wanting to do, she's wanting to, she's wanting to see if you're bent, you're gonna bend or you're gonna break and start to show insecurities or backpedal. As soon as you do that, you fail her interest test because now you're trying to please her, you're trying to put her on the pedestal, all of a sudden you become lower in her eyes when it comes to your sexual market value. See, a man's greatest superpower is that a woman doesn't know your sexual market value. A woman doesn't know if you're used to pulling eights, nines, or tens, or if you're used to pulling twos and threes. She can't tell. The only way she can tell is by giving a deep dive and an understanding of your personality based on how well you can stand up to her, based on how well you pass her interest indicator tests. This is the game. So, shit tests happen. Okay, if you pass them, cool, you guys probably sleep together within the first anywhere from probably one, to five dates, somewhere in there, depending on where she's at with her attraction level towards you, okay? Now, stage two, if you guys continue to see each other post-sex, all this is is booty whipping test. She's wanting to see if you're weak for her ass yet. She's wanting to see if you, if you are weak and if you're attached to her and her sex yet, okay? What this is, is these tests are interest tests and women test to gauge your interest level, which means as soon as you start to fail her tests, if you're becoming insecure, if you're becoming controlling, if you're getting weak for her, okay? Then she's gonna just hit you with a pullback. And then what's gonna happen is the whole desire dynamic can dissolve. So what really kind of like, it, what's hard for men to comprehend and what's hard for men to process is guys look at this and they don't understand that a woman's brain is polar opposite to yours. So I'm gonna give you an example again. You have a, you have a dude best friend, okay? And you've invested time into him, meaning this dude best friend of yours, you guys have gotten a beer together every Saturday for the past three years in a row, okay? So naturally, you have invested time. You have equity invested in this person. You have re uh, in emotional equity invested into this person. You have relationship equity invested into this person. If your best friend name is Tom, Okay, you would do anything for Tom and Tom would do anything for you. And that happens because you guys have a history together. The part where men get very confused is they don't see that a woman's brain is polar opposite. So she doesn't care. She doesn't care if you have two years history with her, 20 years history with her, two weeks history with her. See, this is where men, it's like they're dating a girl for 18 months and they'll find out that she's cheating on him. And they'll say the things like, how could you? I'd never do this to you. How could you betray me like this as a person, okay, as an individual? When a woman deals with a man, she's not dealing with the man on an individual person to person level. She's dealing with the person who she can best optimize her, her hypergamy to be with because women are survival creatures. You are a utility for her. It is impossible for her to look at you as this human to human compatibility, lovey dovey connection, where you guys now have mutual interest and intent in each other. And this is not be me being bitter. So that's the thing too. Some of you guys, you guys are gonna go, yeah, do you understand I'm, I'm 27 years old. I am not at the point where I, I, I'm, I've not went through the weeds where I could even be bitter or weathered. I have accepted these things because of all of the things that I've seen. And this is the truth. The more times, I'm gonna tell you this, the more times that I've seen guys say the words like, well, not all women are like that, or they'll say things like, you know, Casey, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take like, you know, I'm gonna take 10% or 20, or no, no, actually, let's go higher. When guys say, you know what, I'm gonna take 80 to 90% of what you just demonstrated to me on this whiteboard, on this marker board presentation, and I'm going to use that 90%, but I'm gonna disregard the icky points about this on the, on the marker board that I don't like, those are the guys that lose the most. Because you want to accept the truth, but you're only, want to, well, you're only wanting to accept the truth half ways, okay? Those are the guys who fail because they're trying to pick and choose, and you tell yourself one thing, you tell yourself, well, I'm different. I have a good job, so I can, I can ignore some of these rules. I'm naturally more charismatic, so I can ignore some of these rules. I'm a seven or eight figure business earner, so I can ignore some of these rules. I can show my hand to a woman just a little bit easier. I can care for a woman more than the average bear. Those are the guys who get fucked the most, and you get fucked the most because you're trying to ignore the fact that a woman is a survival creature and she is not going to reciprocate the level of mutual care or desire that you're wanting to. You don't get to pick and choose. I am not immune to this, you are not immune to this, Leonardo DiCaprio is not immune to this. Drake is not immune to this. Chris Brown or Justin Bieber is not immune to this. 
you're going to notice that this is the way it is. So the quicker you accept these aspects and these elements of what the desire dynamics between men and women are like, the better, more fulfilling relationships you're going to have. And that is why I make these videos. If you like this video, hit the like button, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.